Did you know obstructive sleep apnea is a common sleep disorder that often goes unnoticed due to its unclear signs and symptoms? It occurs when the throat muscles block the passage of air which causes one to stop breathing for 10 to 60 seconds at a time. Some symptoms include lack of concentration, verbal and visuospatial memory, motor skills, dry mouth, and headaches when waking, lower libido, and waking up during the night to urinate, just to name a few. So let's back up a bit. Why exactly do we wake up gasping for air? When the airway closes, the amount of oxygen in your blood declines rapidly, resulting in a buildup of CO2, which is detected by chemoreceptors in the bloodstream. These receptors are specialized receptors that monitor pH in the blood and adjust breathing and heart rate to bring conditions back to normal. The body responds with the brain sending a signal to quickly wake up, resulting in a sharp intake of air, bringing back the oxygen levels to a stable position. So the first question I have is, uh, what are some early indications that a child may have sleep apnea? Children with sleep apnea, typically what the parents will notice is that their sleep is very disrupted. Usually they will snore, not always, but they may see labored breathing where they're struggling to breathe. Is it true that the growth hormone is disrupted in like younger kids with sleep apnea? In fact, it's disrupted in older people as well. Uh, growth hormone is typically released during slow wave sleep, which is deep sleep, which is typically the first third of the night you get most of your deep sleep. And certainly with the disruption of breathing causing the fracture of sleep, growth hormone secretion is released and that's why they fail to thrive and that's why they don't grow. What are some long-term consequences of uh, untreated sleep apnea, I guess, for older people? For older people, the concerns relate to blood pressure. People with sleep apnea, they can get jumps in blood pressure when they've had an obstruction and they've woken up and they started breathing again. Their blood pressure can jump up 30, 40 millimeters of mercury. Uh, there's a much higher prevalence of diabetes. There's a much higher prevalence of renal dysfunction. There are many available treatments provided for individuals with sleep apnea. The number one common method is CPAP, or Continuous Positive Airway Pressure Device. This is a mask that covers the nose and mouth and blows air into the airway, thus constantly increasing pressure in the throat, ensuring it stays open. There are many benefits of CPAP, including better sleep, improved focus, lower blood pressure, and a lower risk of heart disease. 70% of individuals with OSA are on CPAP in Ontario. Other common treatments provided include dental appliances that focus on the repositioning of the lower jaw and tongue and upper airway surgery for the removal of airway tissue. Lifestyle changes such as weight loss and avoiding alcohol consumption and smoking can also play a huge role in preventing and treating sleep apnea. You've heard of sleep apnea, but have you heard of the new product on the market? Inspire, created by coastal ear, nose, and throat, works inside the body along with the natural breathing cycle of a patient to effectively treat sleep apnea. Through a quick outpatient procedural incision, the device is placed under the skin of the neck and controlled by a handheld sleep remote. It senses airway obstruction and sends mild stimulations to the hypoglossal nerve to move the tongue forward and open the airways. With no mask, hose, or noise, this device is the new popular choice. With over 3,000 patients using it worldwide, approved in 2014, it now has a 95% success rate. Older adults were three times more likely to self-report being diagnosed with sleep apnea than younger individuals. Age-related changes in the control of breathing when sleeping can increase sleep apnea in older individuals. The increased pharyngeal resistance even in healthy elderly people is increased compared with younger individuals indicating a predisposition to airway collapsing. Males were two times more likely to report being diagnosed with sleep apnea compared to females. Males tend to display more classical symptoms, such as snoring or trouble with breathing, while females present symptoms like fatigue or insomnia. This difference in symptoms between men and women underlie a potential underdiagnosis in women. So what should you do if you think you have sleep apnea? First things first, go and see your doctor. Try to bring a record of your sleep, whether if it's audio or a video. And finally, conduct an overnight sleep study at a sleep center. This will monitor your blood pressure, sleep state, eye movement, brainwaves, respiratory effort, and airflow.